How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I've got a bit of a simple mission. Uh, it's one on the Institute map, but I'm starting off from Heartlands because there's no uh, garage on the Institute map. Um, yeah, it's called the Wheat Link, and I've got to go and get two wooden planks, which are kind of scattered across the map uh, on Institute, so there's no uh, warehouse to go to. And yeah, for this one I've got the Brigadier, uh, the GMC Brigadier 8000, so it's a DLC truck. Um, taking a crane with me because obviously the cargo is kind of already out on the map so you've got to pick it up. Uh, yeah, travelling across to the Institute gateway. I thought I'd just go this way this time. I normally cut across like that island but I wanted to actually see. It looks like there's a broken bridge and that up there and uh, it appears I have uncovered the map at some point but for the life of me I can't really remember. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I figured I'd go and check it out. Sorry if you can hear my cat going off like a car alarm in the background. <laughs> I swear, I'm like 94% convinced at this point that every time I click to record audio my TV lets out some like ultrasonic cat screech it tells him, start meowing now. It's pretty pretty creepy how accurate he is on it. Um, yeah, taking a, a goddamn horse of a vehicle as well. Mainly like a bit of a trip to do, nothing too crazy, it's still a bit of a simple chilled mission, but uh, there's a bit of a drive to go. And overall, this vehicle's not terrible like fuel wise, but um, yeah, it's not the most efficient I would say, so definitely worth taking one along. You can see as well, it's a little bit on the springy side, although I believe I have got uh, the tune custom suspension on, so I assume I can go down to like just raised if I wanted to. And then uh, I also put the UOD two tyres on, I'm not very good with the code names of the tyres. I gave them a go over the chained. Um, I don't know, I suppose really I'd need to do this run again with the chain tyres just to see how it stacks up, but uh, there's a few little bits where they were struggling. And the tyres, the 46 inch tyres, which is not terrible, it'll do, but yeah, I wouldn't want less inches. <laughs> That's what she said of course. Um, yeah, kind of like 48 and high is usually uh, a bit better, but they're not like tiny, is it? The step deck, uh, step deck, the step pike thing, the new truck that's got a uh, 43 inch tyres, so that's definitely a bit on the uh, small side. Uh, yeah, just rallying across the field. So much quicker way than uh, following the roads around. Again, that's one thing I do like about these maps is you kind of can just see how you feel and uh, either go kind of as the crow flies for the most part or actually pay attention to the supposed road network it's got going on. And yeah, I quite like rallying across the countryside. I was sort of more focused at the minute, that's why I was not hardly paying attention when I'm steering and all sorts. I was looking at the gearbox because I'm in high at the minute, but I keep trying out different vehicles going into the auto, and uh, yeah, this is another vehicle where Occasionally, here and there, I was able to get up into six gear out of eight, but for the most part, it's keeping me, forcing me to stay in like fourth or fifth, which seems to just be something they've done with this phase. I think that it must have dropped down to first pretty quick as well. Um, yeah, I wish they'd sort it out, to be honest. But some people have said that the off road gearboxes are still working pretty fine, so uh, yeah, I might switch over and try some of them soon. It's one of them though, it's the high gear, like there's such a nice pace in high gear that I struggle, it's giving that up, <laughs> but that's going to hurt me. It's like with some of the gearboxes, the, uh, the multi-purpose gearbox, that's good other than it's not got a high range, and that's what sort of puts me off that as well. Uh, this little section here, yeah, this I can't even remember cutting across here before, uh, apparently I have. I don't think we can ever fix that bridge. Not that I mind again, I sort of I like cutting across these sections. And I think it's here, it'll sort of give you, I was trying to, I was pushing my luck in height. To be fair, this thing doesn't kick you out of height. It will eventually, but it's not, it's, it's pretty lenient on it. Um, yeah, there's like a bit of a bump going on here. I don't think I was caught on any rocks or anything. I was trying to pan the camera around and uh, see what's going on. I think just as you go from like the river section back to the this like hump of mud, that the actual hitbox underneath is just a bit on the sharp side and uh, yeah I mean that's probably an example where like slightly bigger tyres would actually climb over there a little bit easier but thankfully there was a tree nearby so I just fired a winch out and uh, yeah we're good to go. Yeah 
yeah, it was a bit of a crap attempt there, <laughs> panning the camera around, but I did have a little look, and uh, I couldn't see like any rocks or anything that I was wedged on. Anyway, that's that a bit of the map done. Like I said, pretty simple cruise going to, uh, yeah, the Institute map. And again, I was going through some of the missions and contracts tonight. There's um, there was one I want to get done pretty soon because it said access to warehouse, which I could do with that because there's a couple of other missions and contracts where uh, I've got stuff like drilling parts to drop off, but I haven't got anywhere yet that uh, I can get the drilling parts from. You could hear as well when I was driving along there, it it actually sounds like you're really high in the revs, like it's as if the game is physically stopping you from going up the gears, it doesn't sound like it's a lack of RPM that is the issue, which normally before there are, we seem to have done quite a lot of sort of RPM rev caps on this game, but yeah, it definitely seems to be like a gear cap, because that sounded like it was at the top of its uh, revs. Um, yeah, so basically I'm going to cut across, I don't know why that car is so gold, <laughs> it was random but I spotted it as I was uh, moving the camera across. Yeah, there's a plank, uh, was it, yeah, wooden planks, there's one there and then there's one at the river crossing here. So I'm going to kind of cut across, get them, freestyle across the countryside, back across the river and then follow the little wiggly road. Um, it's to the yard in like, it's the bottom, it's pretty close to the gateway from uh, the crossroads map to the institute, which I could have just as easily spawned at the uh, the crossroads garage and gone that way but it's just for the I remember the last couple of videos I've gone uh, when I've had to travel to the Institute map I've gone from uh, the crossroads I've just figured I'd uh, mix it up a little bit plus it kind of worked out alright because I'm sort of cutting from right to left across the map and that lines up with scooping the two lots of wooden planks up yeah it got to this point though I, uh, I'm not following the road I'm just going to cut across this field what could possibly go wrong tree was lucky as well. <laughs> Got a little taste. I'm not sure what these are in the field. If it's like top of a carrot. Or some other kind of random shrub thing. I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, it was going well through the field until I got to this corner. And then I bogged down quite a bit. That's what I've kind of found with these tyres. I do think overall this vehicle must have some kind of relevant weight to it just doesn't weigh as much as a crisp packet because it does seem to sink and bog down quite a bit but again it, the fact that it's got a bit of weight as well it sort of feels a little bit more realistic but yeah there was a couple of times tonight where it kind of was getting caught out there was that uh, where I was crossing the bridge and it wasn't able to climb up over like the mud hump uh, yeah that field this pipeline as well I believe I drove over this the other day, or maybe last week, uh, in the Zix 605R, I think it was, and that managed to climb over it just fine. But again, thankfully, they have actually placed like immovable trees scattered around. Well, I don't know, actually, maybe that tree is movable, <laughs> if I hit it hard enough. That tree laying down in the, uh, the swampy section, though, that ain't going anywhere, sadly. They're a bit of a nightmare these days. And yeah, that's sort of more beach looking on this side, actually, that fuel tank does sit quite low, so I suppose it beats on that really. But it's another example where slightly bigger tyres just overall average out, like your chassis will sit higher and all the rest of it. It's <laughs> trying to blow them beehives up from the road, but I was having none of it. I'll be back, they're on the list. I was just looking around, I was like, why does this look familiar? The yard to the left is uh, where I had to get some metal beams from with the big storm crane I was using in the live stream. And things got a little bit adventurous at the end. Um, yeah, pulled up here, jumped the loaf out the sideboard. I could have gone somewhere and got a trailer if I really wanted. I do get a little bit sentimental about having to uh, get the loaf out of there, but sometimes it's got to happen. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, the wooden planks aren't both like in the same place, they're just sort of scattered across the map. As you can see, <laughs> I went for a jump. The loaf has now become part of the bridge. 
And see, at this point, because part of my plan was when I get here, I knew I was going to jump a loaf out the uh, sidewall anyway. I was kind of, in theory, the idea was I was going to leave a loaf just yeah around there somewhere. Um, just as like he's got fuel and repairs and everything for when I'm messing around on this map later. But like I say, oh, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds to let go of the goddamn horse. Sometimes I just gotta bring him with me. Well, by sometimes I mean all the time. <laughs> That's how it generally works out. But he often he more than pays his way. I knew it as well. Just as I was cutting across here, I was trying to push it. I didn't want to go back into that swampy section and I've clipped this tree and then it does some kind of smoke screen protection so I can't even see what's going on I think I just caught my bumper on it but again, yeah, they're the trees I need to figure out how to kill them and it's quite a good example of where like the road is more brutal really than just going along like either side of the road where you can sort of see grass it was trying to go, to be fair, I think it was there, let me go into high gear from first gear, which is, again, it's pretty decent, that's a pretty lenient gearbox. No, oh, no, it's ticking along right now, yeah, it must be, I think it was this section here, it just starts to bog me down, and the ruts in the road get pretty deep as well, almost making me tip over. I'm not sure why I kept trying to go that side. Well, I think at first I was trying to balance it to where, like, have one set of tyres on, like, the middle of the road where it's not all squidged in, but yeah, it wasn't really going very well. And, I mean, this sort of truck, it's not terrible. Again, there's certainly missions it could do on this phase and that, but it just. I imagine this truck would be a lot more at home on maps like Black River, Smithfield Dam, that sort of stuff. Like I said, it's not terrible by any means, but yeah, it's a DLC vehicle. I've had it a little while, I think since Phase 4, the Amore region, and uh, yeah, again, it's not terrible, but I don't know. It's not one I particularly go running back to, it's just another one where as I was scrolling through the different vehicles, trying to uh, get a bit, a bit more use out of the ones that normally sit in my garage gathering dust. It's flying along at the minute, I was thinking, oh, this is going great. And then hit some kind of bump. I'm going to spin the camera around as well. Look, the wood bridge, if you could even call it that, it's only got one plank running across it, and then it's kind of squidged off to the uh, right as I'm looking at it now. Yeah. I'll be honest, this whole section here, <laughs> I could just tell by looking at it, I was like, ah, oh, this is going to be some kind of nightmare. I was pretty surprised when I was uh, able to cut across the first bit of the river section so easily. So you see, like I say, he more than pays for himself to send in the loaf. Managed to get it moving up a bit further, but because I was right in the middle of the truck, it couldn't decide if it, like, when I'm doing the zombie winch and that, whether to drive forwards or backwards. So it started reversing at one point, and then, yeah. I was like, I'll move ahead. The old river current. Thought I could stop my goddamn professional, but. It's not his first radio. He knows what he's doing. broken. It does get broken pretty easily, this engine, like the top engine now for the loaf. It's not too bad though, because if you get in a situation like that where you do start drowning it in the river, if the engine had 300 points, obviously just to fix it again, it's going to eat your entire roof rack. It's only got about 70 points, I think, so even though it does get damaged fairly easily, relatively speaking, uh, yeah, you can just, you've got four or five chances to keep fixing it up and have another go. But anyway, as usual, he saved the day like a goddamn horse, and uh, yeah, gonna grab me wood. Yeah, that's what she said. I've been messing around a little bit with this crane tonight, and uh, I have to say, it feels a little bit better than it used to. Not crazy, but it's not really been hassling me with the cargo. I was also able to pick a loaf up and put them in the sideboard at some point. But to be fair though, tonight, even the big crane was working like normal again, that's been sketchy to say the least the last week or two. Then now I'm stuck on some of the things sticking out of the map. Again this whole section there's just odd bits of wood sticking out 
all over the place, uh, like tree branches and all, yeah, posts sticking out, that wooden bridge, again, <laughs> use the term loosely, uh, that I fell into the water from. That thing's a bit jagged, so yeah, I'm out of here. Dropping the hammer. Smashing my vehicle up along the way. See what I mean? I was I tried to do it properly. I was like, oh, I'll follow follow the wooden bridge looking thing. And then there's like, as you can see, I'm, there's a post just before you get there. So yeah, that whole thing, you may as well just cut around the edge of it. it does more harm than good. And at this point, I certainly couldn't leave the uh, horse behind. Not only had he earned his trip by uh, rescuing me, but I also knew while I was messing around there, I was kind of nailed the fuel a little bit, so just to be safe. I'll take some reserves. And then, yeah, I got caught on that wooden bridge again. That would be the sort of section where uh, doing those... Uh, the mods that can lay bridges, there's a few different ones now, so... Um, but yeah, places like that would be uh, pretty handy. It would be quite cool if they added something like that into the actual game. Even though I happily use mods, I just because this is like my playthrough where I don't use mods. Yeah, it's one of them where I wish or thinking it would be nice if they added something like that. And uh, yeah, instead of following the road all the way around, I was just kind of waiting until the cliff edge. To the left of me stopped, found a place I could climb up, fly across here. And then for some reason I'm always pretty I don't know, blase <laughs> with my fuel usage, but then usually when I get like three quarters of the way through the mission and realise I've not got much juice left, I try and drop the hammer, do a bit of speed running. So crossing this roof section a pleasure. What kind of maniac programmed that last bit? I think that was the river section where when I was going the other way I keep going off to the right and driving into the water and getting stuck. But somehow I hit it right. <laughs> so she said we made it. And I could kind of tell at this point it was looking a possible chance but the fuel was uh, getting nailed a little bit too quick. Especially that it starts doing that stalling thing at like 5 or 6 litres. Still not too sure if I'm uh, keen on that. I get what they're going for, but <laughs> just can't help but no. If I still had six litres in a vehicle, I don't think it'd be uh, stuttering that quick. And sometimes it's those last six litres. That can be the difference. And yeah, we're getting close, but by the time, especially I knew I have to climb through this swampy section. Uh, yeah. Let's sod it. Accept the inevitable. Switch to the loaf. Borrow some roof rack juice. And we're off again. See, that's twice, just in one mission. For any people that do wonder why do I take a loaf with me all the time, that is why. Save me from the river. And now he's uh, saved me from the fuel. Which, truly speaking, even though I'm only down the road from where I've got to drop this stuff off, if I didn't have the loaf with me, that, yeah, I'm now. Either gonna have, go and have to find some other vehicle I've abandoned on this institute map, or load back over to the Heartlands or the Crossroads map, get some up from the garage and drive all the way. Just for a bit of juice. And yeah, it's this uh, warehouse that's kind of pretty much next to the Crossroads gateway. picks up quite a bit of random damage as truck does, but it does keep a decent enough pace to where, again, it's one of them vehicles that are better, kind of travel quicker, and then they take more engine damage because they're travelling quicker, so it kind of makes them look worse in some sense. Uh, when I got it, I was looking at it, it as like, I can drop two lots of wood off or an oversized cargo, and I was wondering what was going on, but it's a different mission, so it's just, obviously the game's got a bit muddled up, and just when you go to drop stuff off, because I've already activated the other mission, it offers me to drop off either one. Um, yeah, got that done though, about three and a half grand. Not too crazy, but uh, yeah, it's another one in the bag. It was an uh, enjoyable little mission. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn beast, and I'll be back soon.